This video will explain turning tables, generating examples from semi-structured tables for endowing language models with reasoning skills. This is a really exciting paper that has the potential to add a huge functionality to the current generation of natural language processing systems. So to begin, what is reasoning and how does reasoning differ from other kind of skills that require intelligence? A great analogy that was really famous is this idea of system one and system two thinking, where system one describes this intuitive perception, this quick knowledge that you don't even have to think about, you just instantly can access it. Say when you see something and you just quickly recognize an object and these kinds of ideas compared to system two, which is this slow logical style of thinking. So this is what we mean by reasoning. Reasoning are the system two skills that describe symbolic reasoning operations like compositions or conjunctions of facts, numerical operations and quantification, and sort of like how the SQL language processes data with the uh, relational algebra, these kind of merging of these ideas, this kind of uh, symbolic reasoning is what we're after and trying to embed into these language modeling systems that do a great job at these system one quick perception tasks, but aren't so great at these system two reasoning skills. So we have two camps for trying to add reasoning skills to the current generation of deep learning systems. The first of which is to add specialized components for specific skills like numerical and temporal reasoning. This is where the neural network system one model will parse the scene and then fill out a table in which you have a symbolic language to aggregate the results of that table. Here's a recent uh, example covered in one of the AI Weekly Update videos showing how that you have this neural system that can generate a table and then you have some symbolic aggregation language for doing this uh, database reasoning over text where you want to answer these symbolic uh, database questions like list everyone born before 1980, which if you just put this as a uh, prompt and then mask and have a language model try to do it would be a really hard task and this is the kind of symbolic uh, reasoning task where the current language models would fail. So instead you break the system down into a two part system where you have the uh, language, the flexibility of the language model combined with the uh, aggregation. And then the other camp and what this uh, technique falls into is this idea of generating synthetic examples at scale by using grammars, templates, and question generation models. So this data augmentation idea where we could form this uh, data and say add it to the manifold of the language that we're learning, add these reasoning skills and provide these examples so we can just kind of keep learning it in the same way that we've been learning it. And one other interesting example of this that was working but hasn't been applied at the same scale of this new paper turning tables is uh, the paper transformers as soft reasoners over language. So uh, the idea here is this idea of composition. So condition and condition star, this kind of regular expression language for how you combine these facts to make conclusions. So you have all these facts and it learns the structure of uh, this and this, this and this, learn that to combine it and then draw these conclusions about uh, when you chain together these different properties that lead to these conclusions, this kind of uh, symbolic reasoning task. So we have these two camps, either try to build some kind of specialized system where you have system one, system two components, or this data augmentation approach where we'll try to form some kind of data set that'll just kind of add this to the functionality in the same kind of language modeling interface. In this paradigm of generating synthetic examples and using data augmentation to add this kind of data to our training set, this paper is proposing to use semi-structured tables as the resource for sourcing this uh, data, this data source for this procedure of generating this kind of data. So we have these kinds of tables and they uh, look through Wikipedia and we'll get into more of the statistics of exactly how many tables they're able to find but you can automatically extract these kind of composition, comparison, and uh, difference, these kind of uh, symbolic queries from this data and then turn it into sentences. So there was another paper recently that came out about turning uh, knowledge graphs into sentences. So you take relations along the knowledge graph tree and you parse these into sentence and then you mask it out and then embed the knowledge from the knowledge graph into the language models through that interface. And this is a way of uh, embedding the table knowledge into these text sentences to then just train at the same interface as any other data. So here's a template example for the conjunction symbolic reasoning skill and how we can construct questions from the data set that we can then use to train the language model through matching these templates with, with uh, these tables in the Wikipedia corpus. So they come up with these 16 different symbolic reasoning skills and each of them has a, a template like this for how you construct these questions that would test these skills. And the uh, answers can also autom automatically be extracted from these templates. So here's the conjunction example. So what was the column one, column one being this uh, table of just going and grabbing this table, the list of endemic birds of Japan. And it does look like uh, this is just the screenshot I got today. So it looks like it's a little different from when they constructed this data set. But when the column one, in this case, common name, column two family was column two previously, was value two. So say you then index a column and do the copper pheasant, 
uh, the family, and then column three, the distribution, this kind of distribution column here, value three. So again, just indexing along the row, and you get the answers automatically from indexing the row. And then you also have the uh, table title, the uh, uh, list of species, the page title, list of endemic birds of Japan. So, so you get this idea of how you use these tables in order to generate these questions automatically, and you can do this at scale through the use of designing these templates. So this is kind of this idea of, uh, say, pattern exploiting training, prompting, where you have this kind of strategy of extracting uh, training data. So it's not quite like uh, prompting, but it is this idea of this like data augmentation template that you can insert into these uh, language prompt, these language uh, examples to get this uh, training data, and particularly these training, uh, these uh, templates, these example generators generate these particular kind of reasoning skills. So these tables can be crawled from the web at scale and Wikipedia includes millions of these tables with high lexical and domain diversity. Domain diversity being say these birds in Japan compared to the who won the NFL Super Bowl over the last few years, all these different kinds of information that is contained in Wikipedia. So in this study they have 176,000 distinct tables of which using these templates they construct nearly 5 million distinct questions. So these, these are 5 million questions that can be used as training data. data. And this is a massive amount of questions rivaling most of these language modeling data sets other than the really massive ones like C4 and uh, that kind of scale. But still, 5 million questions is a lot bigger than a lot of these, or probably all of these supervised learning data sets. Another detail of this paper that I think is really interesting is that they use a multitask training, a curriculum learning style error sampling to uh, sample the reasoning skills. So again, we have these 16 different reasoning skills and we wanna, have, we wanna be improving at all of them and avoid catastrophic forgetting of the language skills that have been acquired as this problem of uh, deep learning where you learn task A, task B, then task C sequentially, and then by the time you've learned task C, you've forgotten task A, that kind of idea. So curriculum learning is a really exciting solution to this, also just generally uh, improving on uh, training efficiency where you're going to sample the batch based on either you could do error sampling just the success rate of all the different uh, subsets in this case the different reasoning skills and then have some has some problems that are outlined in the open AI paper on uh, the Minecraft environment with the multitask curriculum learning and a better idea is to use momentum sampling the rate of improvement or the change in success probability and then you have this momentum where you might do things like uh, you know control the Delta T of how you're measuring this change have an exponential moving average of the snapshots of the success and these kind of ideas for how you uh, structure this curriculum. So putting this together, the overall pipeline is to use these example generator templates to generate uh, question answering data for each of these different reasoning skills like composition, numeric comparison, date difference, and conjunction. Then uh, sample from this data using the multitask curriculum learning with error-driven sampling to fine tune the T5 pre-trained checkpoint with this data producing this uh, PRISM model. So then what we do is we evaluate it on these reading comprehension data sets, which as far as I understand them are identical to extractive question answering where the answer to the question is uh, classified as a span in the context. So you have these question context pairs and you classify the answer in the context. So say uh, February 1901 is the answer, you classify this uh, span of the tokens as the answer, and that's the, the supervised learning task that this is evaluated on. So here are some uh, statistics of the evaluated data sets, drop, IARC, MMQA, and then just the number of uh, trained development tests, questions to scale this data, compared to the 5 million questions that we had for uh, pre-training. The results of this system presented in this table are really exciting. We see a huge gain over the T5 large model, going from 65 to 72.6. And this data set isn't quite as famous as, say, ImageNet and making some huge advancement of, say, the drop gain, but this kind of gain is generally a pretty huge improvement for these deep learning systems to see it go up by 7% uh, or this exact match F1 scoring, but this still is a huge improvement over this T5 large model, which is a really strong baseline and it isn't just a you know, some kind of simple language model or some kind of simple model for the task. But anyway, so we see more gains in these other uh, tasks, the IRC data set and the MMQA, although they, are, they aren't quite as, this one is pretty large, but I'm not sure what this Oracle means. And then uh, four, and then only slightly on this other data set. But overall, we see this improvement with this really interesting way of generating additional uh, data. So this is further taking apart uh, even larger gains, I think average across different seeds. And then uh, the difference between the momentum averaging error sampling these strategies for uh, how you're doing the multitask curriculum learning. Uh, again, breaking apart these different kinds of reasoning skills. So uh, I think this is date, number, spans. Not exactly sure what this means, but uh, taking apart the ideas of the different kinds of questions that are in the test set, not just a blind evaluation of the entire aggregate uh, test set. 
Uh, then these uh, further doing this again with this other MMQA uh, data set, composition, comparison, conjunction, yes, no, so on. Comparing this uh, data set with the T5 model, showing gains uh, on these um, reasoning tasks that it's been trained for. And then again, date compare, date difference, number compare, extract number, counting, and then extract argument. So I think an interesting statement about this kind of research is that deep learning can do system one and system two thinking, or as far as we can measure it through these input output tests, it just needs the right data and probably also would benefit from scale as well. We have these interesting cases like Dolly, GPT-3, where if you scale these models up and give them enough data, they can kind of do these sub-symbolic reasoning skills that are kind of contained in the data at this scale. Uh, this is an explicit way of generating these reasoning skill data sets, at least as far as we measure this idea of reasoning and how we've defined it to be performing these uh, symbolic operations like listing the number of things, counting them, doing this aggregation of conditions. If it has the right data, it seems like it might be able to do this pretty well in this kind of data augmentation approach of extracting it from these wiki tables. Thank you so much for watching this explanation of turning tables and this idea of endowing language models with reasoning skills by generating the data to do it with these templates on these uh, tables by defining these different ways of extracting the different reasoning tasks and then also this interesting component of the paper of using this curriculum learning uh, based sampling between the 16 different uh, symbolic reasoning skills that are again extracted as training data from these templates in the tables. This is definitely one of my favorite papers that I've read recently and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for watching again and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.